uh, welcome back to those of you who have joined us before um, and it's lovely to see you if this is the first time you're joining us. So we'll just take a couple of minutes to let everybody set themselves up. Um, today is session three of our four week primary care yoga series. Uh, the aim of the series is to help you to realign and rebalance uh, and simply reset for the new year. Uh, we've been taking a different focus for each session and today's session we're going to be focusing on the hips, pelvis and lower back. So thank you, really lovely to see you all. Um, yeah, and welcome back. So I'm Kieran, for those of you uh, who are new to the sessions, um, I'm a GP, I work in uh, West Bridgeford and also undertook yoga and stretch training, mainly out of interest a couple of years ago. So it's really lovely to, to welcome you all. Um, we are going to start today's session similarly to how we've previously started. So we're going to come to lay on your back, so I'm come to lay on the mat and I'd like you to take a couple of moments as usual to just choose whichever position is comfortable for you. So you may want to take a bend in the knees or you may want to have the legs stretched out ahead of you. So take just a couple of moments to choose whichever position is right for you. If you have your folded blanket, it's not essential, but if you'd like to use your folded blanket, you can either pop it over yourself, um, you could place it under the knees just to soften a bit of the pressure in the lower back, or you could take it under the head and use it as a little pillow. So just have a play around, take a couple of moments to get yourselves really comfortable here. I'm going to be spending a few moments here. So have a shuffle around, make any adjustments that you need to, and start to just let the body settle. So bringing yourself to a nice still position that feels comfortable. And as you do so, let's start to let go of any thoughts or feelings you've been carrying before today's session and gently leave them outside the room and start to bring your focus to the present moment and to the physical sensations within the body. So let's start to check in, doing a little body scan from head to toe. So very briefly, noticing various areas as you move down the body, just almost as if you're touching on each area lightly, just noticing how each area feels as you work your attention down. Notice any areas of tightness or discomfort. Not really trying to change anything here. And we've been using the meaning of the word yoga to help us to bring a focus to our sessions. So the word yoga meaning to join um, really sort of allows us to think about the joining of the mind and the body. So let's join those up. Keeping your attention on how you feel physically. And we often use the breath as our anchor here. So let's start to bring our attention to the breath. If the mind ever starts to wonder, we can always come back to the breath. Notice the flow of the air as it enters the nostrils, so the mouth is closed. Track the air into the backs of the nasal passages. 
into the back of the throat, into the upper chest, mid chest and lower chest. So notice the movement, these various areas. And we're going to use our little breathing technique, our Ujjayi breathing technique. So the Ujjayi breath, Ujjayi means victorious. The Ujjayi breath is the one that we use when we're doing our physical yoga postures. So the mouth is closed and we're using the back of the throat as almost our control centre for the breath. The back of the throat takes control of the speed and the volume of air that we are taking in and out of the body. Let's see if you can bring that focus now. Taking a couple of deep inhalations and exhalations. As you do so, you may notice a noise in the back of the throat. And we often say this sounds like the sound of the sea or ocean waves. So see if you can notice that. Subtle noise. Let's take a last Final deep inhalation and exhalation. And now let's start to bring a little bit of movement into the fingers and the toes now. And gently circle the wrists and the ankles if you have the legs stretched out ahead of you. And let's take a bend into the knees and hug the knees into the chest. Gently rock from side to side. And I'd like you to just think about the points of contact. As you rock from side to side, points of contact with the back of the pelvis with the mat. So really see if you can start to just massage the back of the pelvis onto the mat as you come very gently from side to side. So quite, quite a subtle movement. These don't have to move too far. And we're going to bring the soles of the feet back to the mat now. So we have a bend in the knees. If you have anything under the head or if you had a blanket under the knees, you might just want to remove that now. And Let's take the hands to the sides and the palms facing down. So hands are both sides of you. Soles of the feet are in contact with the mat. And we're simply going to rock the pelvis very gently from backwards and forwards. It's almost as if you're tilting the tailbone down and lifting it up. So, Start to just explore that movement through the back of the pelvis and the lower lumbar spine. You might want to just lift off slightly as you lift the tailbone and the pelvis up gently. Trying to keep a smooth contact with the mat. And just being mindful if anything feels too strong, just bring it back. So really listen to what the body's telling you. And then we come to a neutral position. And now we're going to take that pelvic tilt from side to side. So let's tilt the pelvis towards the left. So you may want to just push through the right knee slightly and lift the right side of the pelvis up slightly. And then let's bring that movement to the right side. So the pelvis comes down to the right, left knee just lifts up very slightly. So just bringing a little bit of mobility and try and keep a smooth movement so that 
again, you're almost rolling back of that pelvis. So we're bringing a little bit of mobility into that lower back. It's quite often held very static for long periods of time. So we're giving it the opportunity to have a little bit of mobilization here. Let's come back to neutral now. And next we're going to take some circles. But before we do so, I'd like you to engage the lower belly. And I'd like you to imagine you've got a marble in the navel or the belly button. So we're trying to keep this marble within the belly button. So we're engaging the lower belly and those lower abdominal muscles. And let's take a pelvic circle. Let's go clockwise first of all. And again, see if you can keep a nice smooth contact with the mat as it comes down. So the opposite side will want to lift slightly, but as you ground the pelvis, try and keep a nice smooth action as you circle. And then let's change direction. Keeping contact points with the mat, using the breath. And now come back to neutral. Okay, we're going to take a little stretch, like a lying pigeon here. So I'd like you to keep the left foot grounded and let's lift the right foot off the mat. And we're going to take the right ankle over the left knee. So the knee, the right knee is at right angles. We've got bend in that knee. The right ankle is just resting on, on the top of the left knee or, or lower thigh. And then let's start to lift up through the left heel and just walk that left foot back towards the bottom. And if you feel that you can, you might just want to take the back of the left thigh with your hands. So you may want to just grip the fingers round the back of the left thigh. And you can either stay here or you can start to just straighten up through the left leg. See if that left leg wants to come up. And we're taking that stretch into back of the right glute and those abductors. Flex the left foot. Take a nice deep breath in and let's release the breath, release the left foot, uncross the right foot and ground the right foot down and then let's take the left foot off the mat and again cross left ankle over right knee. Start to walk that right foot back towards the bottom, raise up through the right heel. And again, you can either stay here or if you feel that the hands can come to the back of the right thigh, you can grip the back of the right thigh and start to explore if that right leg wants to straighten. And again, take a flex into the right foot just to hold that stretch. Take a deep breath in. And then let's breathe out and release the stretch. So let's release the right foot down. And then the left foot comes to join it on the mat. So we're going to hug those knees back in now, back into the chest. And we're simply now going to take some knee circles. So if you keep the hands on the top of the knees, we're going to Hug the knees into the chest, move them towards the chest and then separate them out. And we're going to circle them forwards to join together. So they join as they come back towards the chest, separate them out as they go round away from you. And when they come back together, bring them back up to the chest, separate out, away from you. And back together, we take one more towards the chest, separate out. 
take them away from you and then back together and we simply do the same in the opposite direction so we push the knees away separate out and bring them towards the chest as they join and then push them away separate bring them towards the chest push them away again and we separate join together nice big circles last one and as the knees come back together let's again rock from side to side and this time we're going to come to rest on the right hand side just briefly so we come to stay on the right hand side and then push yourself up into a seated position nice and slowly so we've just warmed up a little bit down the backs of the legs and the sides of the of the buttocks so we're going to just take a couple of postures in a seated position <clears throat> if if you feel comfortable cross-legged then you can stay as you are if you feel that this is a bit strong on the lower back you may want to take a little cushion or folded blanket under the bottom so that the hips are slightly higher than the knees so have a little a little play and get yourselves comfortable I'm going to take a couple of postures here so once you're in a comfortable position we're going to take the left hand to the left side so so just ground the left hand on the left side and let's inhale and the right hand is just going to come up and overhead and then let's exhale back down and then let's ground the right hand and inhale the left hand up exhale left hand comes down inhale right hand comes up exhale right hand down and inhale left hand up and then we come back to neutral we're going to take a little twist so the right hand is going to come to the outside of the left knee and the left hand is going to just come behind the bottom you may want to use your fingertips here to keep the height and let's push up through the spine so let's create a nice bit of height here through the spine creating space between the vertebral discs and using the breath just to gently twist round it doesn't have to be too strong the twist does not have to be strong so simply creating the height and the space it's more than anything here and let's slowly release back to center let's do the same on the other side so left hand comes to outside of the right knee and again the right hand just rounds behind the bottom and again let's create that space and height through the spine we don't have to be looking over the shoulder here the gaze can stay down very gentle way of just twisting through the upper body okay and let's release we're going to come into cobbler's pose next so this is called Baddha Konasana, Baddha Konasana so we're going to bring the soles of the feet together have a little play around with a if that's it, if that feels right for you if it doesn't you can simply just stretch the feet out ahead of you a little bit and just try to open up the hips by rolling the feet out but if you feel that you can bring the soles together have a little play around with the position so heels closer to the bottom will open up the pelvis and the hips more so if it feels a bit strong you can move feet slightly further away and let's try clasping the hands so clasp the fingers and see if the hands can come under the toes so we take the toes in the hands here if they don't want to the hands could simply come to rest on the lower inner calves or the ankles so let's try to bring the hands down slightly so that we the chest is nice and open but we've got this forwards leaning position 
and we're going to bounce the knees. So we sometimes call this butterfly, we may hear of this referred to as butterfly. So let's take a couple of breaths, nice steady breaths, just bouncing the knees. And then start to slow it down, and we release and come back up. The left foot is now going to just come slightly further over, um, and it may want to just come out slightly further ahead of you. And then the right foot, we're going to take the right foot in the left hand, and then the right knee is going to be supported with the right hand. So you've almost got your lower right leg, completely supported in the hands um, and we're going to just take a little rocking action off the hips so this is called rock the baby so we're mobilizing through the pelvic joints through the hip hip joint if, if again if anything feels strong or it doesn't feel right just come out of the posture Use your Ujjayi breath. Keep nice, steady, focused the posture. And then let's swap sides. So the right foot comes down, the left foot comes in the left hand, and the left knee is supported under the left hand. And again, let's come to this rock the baby posture. So taking this gentle movement. Nice steady breath. Let's slow it down now. And we're going to take a seated version of pigeon now. So it's a slightly different, um, a different way of taking this <clears throat> pigeon posture. So if you're sitting on something, you may want to just remove it from the bottom. You may find it easier to come a little bit lower down. The, you have a bend in the knees, obviously, and the feet are grounded here. And then we take the right foot over the left knee. So again, it's, it's very similar to how we did as we were laid down. And it, again, play around with the position of the left foot. So further away from you will soften the stretch. If you want a bit more intense stretch, then bring the heel closer to the bottom. And let's ground the hands. <clears throat> you may want them slightly behind you so that you can almost lean back a little bit on the hands. So we spread through the fingers and let's open up through the chest. So we're going to use the lift of the chest to help with the posture, to deepen the posture. You might want to use your nice Ujjayi exhalation here. and release. Let's change sides. So the right foot comes down, left ankle crosses over the top of the right knee. And again, let's take the hands back, spread through the fingers and lift up through the heart center. Using your nice deep exhalations to hold through the posture. One more breath. And let's release. So next we're going to come to all fours. <clears throat> if you feel more comfortable having a blanket under the knees, you can do so. So we come to our all fours posture. Again, the fingers are nice and spread and the hips <clears throat> come, sorry, the knees come under the hips. So they're, they're aligned under the hips. And if it's a bit strong on the wrists, you can, or the wrists or the shoulders or the elbows, you can take the hands out ahead of you. Or you can have the hands just about below the shoulders. I'm going to take some cat-cow postures just to mobilize the spine. So. We take an inhalation, we dip the belly, open through the collarbones and the chest and we look forwards. And we exhale, 
we roll through the spine, belly button comes up to the ceiling, we look between the legs to really empty those lungs. Let's inhale, broaden through the collarbones, tailbone comes up, the belly drops. So let's exhale, rounding through the spine, the navel coming up, looking between the legs. One more inhalation, looking forwards. Let's exhale and look through those knees. Come back to a neutral position and we're going to use the breath to look over the right shoulder. So as we inhale, we're going to look over the right shoulder and just draw the right hip up towards the shoulder or the right hip round towards the shoulder. Exhale back to neutral. Inhale, look over the left shoulder. Bring the left hip towards the shoulder. Exhale back to neutral. Inhale again, look over the right shoulder. Exhale back to neutral. So just bringing a little bit of stretch into the sides of the hips. Inhale, look over the left. Exhale, come back to neutral. And now we're going to take some pelvic circles. So again, grounding through those hands, we're simply going to just circle the pelvis. So you might want to start with quite a small circle. So just pick one direction to start with. And have a play around with the level of mobility you want here. And if you want to stay in one particular position and really stretch into it then just do so so have a play around so again we're bringing a bit of mobility into this area allowing it to have some movement so staying in any position that feels right for you and let's slow it down and let's change direction. So we go in the other direction. Just being mindful of the wrists. If it feels a bit strong on the wrists, you can walk the hands forward slightly. Really exploring the range. Seeing what feels right for you. Keeping it slow and gentle. And then let's slow it down and come back to neutral. And we're simply going to sit back into child's pose now. And you might want to take the knees nicely out wide. Take the hands out ahead of you. Or you could fold the, the um, forearms and you could create a pillow with the hands. So explore what feels right for you. And just come to rest briefly for a couple of moments. And then let's come back up. So we're now going to come to a little standing series. We're going to be using a little bit of hip, hip work within this series. So um, if you can stand up, if you have socks on, now is a good time to remove them. So get yourselves set up. And we're going to take ourselves to the top of the mat. So we're facing the short edge of the mat. So we're a little bit further up the top of the mat. And start to just ground the feet. So you may want to lift up the heels and the toes a couple of times. Just really thinking about your mountain posture, really grounding through those feet. Feet are just about hip distance apart here. I'm going to come to a steady point now, steady point of balance. Engage the lower belly. I'm going to inhale and the palms come, to, come together at the heart center. So let's inhale the palms together and exhale here. 
And now we're going to inhale and the arms come up and overhead. Look up and now let's exhale and we fold forwards with the hands. So the hands come out in front of you and let's take a deep bend into those knees and hands come towards the ground. So we're engaging the inner thighs as we do so. We're lowering down towards the ground. Keeping a deep bend in those knees, we're in our standing forward bend. Fingertips come to the mat, just to uh, just ahead of the feet. And then we're going to take a deep step back with the right foot. So the right foot comes quite far back and we're going to drop that right knee. So we're in this low lunge position. I want you to keep a little bit of height here initially. So the chest is high. So looking forwards, let's inhale, really open up through those collarbones. And then let's exhale and just allow yourself to release a little bit. Now, we're going to stay here for a few moments and I'd like you to adjust your foot position. So the left foot is going to walk slightly further out so that the left hand comes to the inside of the left foot. So if, if you want to stay on the fingertips and keep a bit of height, sometimes it's a bit strong. Uh, you can do so. And then if, if it feels good to ground the hands and do so, I'd like you to just explore and just see whether that right hip, so the, the top of the right foot is now grounded on the mat, and just see if that right hip wants to open up a little bit more. So see if you want to just walk the right toes backwards slightly, just working within your own limits, listen to the body, but try to explore the range that you've got here. So what we're doing is we're really opening up through the hip flexors on the right side. And if you can take a bit of movement, let's start to see if we can circle the pelvis slightly. If it feels too strong, just walk the toes back forwards so that the stretch is not too deep and you can keep a static posture here and take that circle in the other direction if you're bringing some movement into this. Okay, we come to a neutral position or come to stillness and then let's walk the right knee forwards a little bit. So you've got a bit more of a bend now in the, in the right knee, a bit more of a steady posture and you can, you can either stay, keep the hands low or you could come onto the fingertips. And what we're going to do now is we're going to roll onto the outside of the left foot. So the left foot that's grounded, we're simply going to lift the big toe and the inner arch up. And we're gonna roll onto the outside of that left foot. So the knee opens out to the left side and then bring it back to center and take it back out again. So rolling onto the outside, outer edge of that left foot and come back to center. And again, we are opening up through the inner left thigh here. Again, if that feels too strong, you can keep it neutral, just keep it grounded. So we're bringing some mobility to these areas that don't often get too much attention. And now let's come to a neutral position. So ground that left foot. Let's keep, it, let's change the position of the hand now. So let's move the left hand to the outside of the left foot. And we're going to ground through the hands, tuck the right toes. We're going to come into a little downward dog. So see if you can step that left foot back, straight into a downward dog. You can keep a bend in the knees here. Start to pedal now through the feet. And then just come to a steady position in your downward dog. And we're going to lift the right foot up behind us on the next inhalation. So the left foot stays grounded and the right foot just comes, just raises it behind you. 
And as you exhale, let's bend that right knee. And we're going to step the right foot between the hands. Okay. We'll drop the left knee. So we're in a low lunge on the other side. Let's take an inhalation, open up through the chest. And as we exhale, we're going to step the left foot to join the right. Back into our standing forward bend. Nice bend in those knees. And now let's inhale and slowly raise those hands back up and overhead. So we come back into our overhead extensions and standing now. Let's exhale and the hands come back into our Tadasana, our mountain pose. So hands, palms just nice and open in front of you. Let's inhale and the palms come together. Exhale. And then inhale, the hands come up and overhead. And we exhale, let's fold forwards, bringing the hands in front of you into our standing forward bend. And then fingertips come to the mat. And let's step that left foot back now. So left foot comes back into our deep lunge. Let's inhale. Keep the height initially. And then let's exhale and explore again. See whether those left toes, so we're grounding through the top of the left foot. See if those left toes just want to walk back very slightly. Exploring the range that you've got in that left hip flexor. And again, if that feels like you're at your limit, stay there. And if you feel like you can bring some movement into that left hip, you could start to circle it in one direction. Use your ujjayi breath here. And take it in the other direction. and come back to neutral. And then let's walk that left knee forward slightly so that you've got a bit more of a steady base. And then the right foot comes to the outside edge of the mat. So we just walk the right foot to the side. Right hand comes onto the inside of the foot now. You could either ground the hands or you could stay on your fingertips, keep some nice height here. And again, we're gonna roll onto the outer edge of that right foot. So opening up the right knee, and coming back in. So we roll that foot out and come back to neutral. Explore the range that you have here. Don't go beyond your limits. So listen to what body's telling you. We're just giving a bit of opportunity to get some mobility into these areas that we often hold a lot of tension in. Okay, let's ground that right foot now. Right hand comes to the outside of the right foot, tuck those left toes, ground the hands, and let's step back into our downward dog again. Pedal the feet. And then on the next inhalation, the left foot stretches up behind you. And then let's exhale, bring the left foot between the hands. So drop the right knee. Inhale, raise up the chest, look forwards. And then we exhale, the right foot comes to join the left. We briefly look down in our standing forward bend. And then really engage those inner thighs, take a deep bend into the knees, and then let's start to raise those hands forwards and then up and overhead, coming up to standing. And then let's lower the hands back down into our Tadasana mountain pose. Okay, so you may want to give the legs a bit of a shake. Hips have had a bit of a workout. 
we're going to just take a couple of standing postures, a couple of simple standing postures. So we're going to come into our warrior one position. We take the left foot forwards and the right foot comes back. Right toes angling out about 45 degrees. Take the hands to the hips and the hips face the short edge of the mat. Let me take a bend into that left knee. I'm just grounding the right foot. And then you can either stay here or you could take the hands up and overhead with the next inhalation. Looking up, shoulders are down. Take one more breath here. And as we exhale, we're going to straighten up through the front knee, take the hands to the hips, I'm going to elongate the spine and start to hinge from the hips and the spine comes to, or it comes down towards the ground. So you could stay in this sort of tabletop position where the spine is horizontal or parallel with the ground and the hands can stay on the hips or the hands could start to come down and the fingertips could start to come towards the floor. So again, just explore your range. If you keep a bend into that front knee, but push back through the left hip and forwards with the right. So we're in Parshvatonasana, this is pyramid posture. Let's bend into the front knee to come out of this. Take the hands back to the hips and we simply change sides. So right foot comes forwards, Left foot comes back, left toes are out about 45 degrees and let's bend into that front knee, hips facing forwards and again let's inhale, hands come up and overhead, the gaze can come to follow if that feels okay, take one more breath And as you exhale, start to straighten up through the front foot. And again, hands come to the hips and let's hinge forwards from the hips. So the, the head and spine just start to come down. And again, they can either stay in this parallel position to the floor or the hands could start to come down, coming onto the fingertips, pushing back through the right hip, forwards with the left. You can keep that bend in the front knee if, it's, if it feels strong on that front leg. Take one more breath. And then bend the front knee to come out. Hands come back to hips. Let's have a little shake of those legs. Okay. So we're going to take our final little section now. We're going to, if you have got a strap or a scarf, or I have an old pair of tights. So if you've got one handy, that'd be very helpful. So we're going to come to lay back down on our backs. <clears throat> and if you keep, just keep a bend in the knees initially. So just come to lay down. If, if you need a minute to go and get something, obviously that's fine, just do so. So we come to lay back down onto the mat. We're going to take a little um, series here where we're using, we're using the strap um, to help to steady, um, basically steady the leg and allow ourselves to really stretch through the hips. Now we're going to be taking a few, um, a few postures where we're, we're bringing one leg up but also um, we're going to explore a, a, a series where we take some twists of the hips and some hip openers. So I want you to just really listen to the body and take feedback from the body. If anything feels too strong, just come back to a neutral position. Um, if it feels good, you can carry on, but obviously just work within your own limits. So first of all, I'd like you to straighten out the left leg. So ground that left heel. And this is really important to have that heel contact with the mat. 
Um, and this will really help to steady, steady you through the posture. And then we take a bend into the right knee, we just bend the right knee into the chest and hook the, whatever you're using, if it's a scarf or a strap um, or a pair of tights, hook it over the sole of the right foot. Take the strap, you can take the strap in both hands, you might just want to join it together and take it into both hands. And um, we're just going to very slowly start to straighten out through the right knee. Now, some of you will find that it's not possible to straighten out through the right knee. So obviously just work within your range. And this really is very much to do with listening to the body. So think about your limits. Think about what feels right. And then on the next in breath, we're going to just raise the head up. So we're keeping our gaze to the toes. We're not bending the spine. We're not flexing through the neck or anything. We're simply just raising the head up and lower back down. And now we're going to gently lower the right leg down towards the ground. So I'd like you to just really use the, use the slow speed. You might want to close your eyes here and do this really consciously. And keeping that grounding in the left heel will allow this posture to keep nice and steady. And this series is called Sutta Hasta Padanga Sarsana. And this series is also done standing. So in some, some yoga schools, they do these positions standing up. So you're balancing on one leg. We won't be doing that today. So let's raise that right leg back up. And if it feels it feels quite nice and you want to just play around with moving the leg up and down, then obviously you can you can stay doing this posture. If you feel that you'd like a little hip opener, we're going to take the strap in the right hand. I'd like you to take the left hand out almost into a half T-shape. So left hand just comes out to the side. And we're going to start to move the right foot out towards the right side. And I'd like you to keep the left heel really nice and grounded here. Just exploring your range and just stay wherever you feel the leg wants to come to. So using that left heel to really keep Steadiness here, not turning the knee in too much, so keeping the, the knee nice and open, and then come back up to a neutral or central position. So the right leg is now raised. And we're simply going to take it to the opposite side. So the right leg now, the right foot is now going to come towards the left side. So we're crossing over the body. You may want to turn the head towards the right side as you do so. Again, using that left heel to keep nice and grounded. If it feels too strong coming to the sides, as I say, you can carry on just moving the leg up and down. Let me come back up. Bring the right foot up in front of you again, pointing towards the ceiling. You can take the strap back in both hands, slowly lower that right foot back down. This time close your eyes. So really notice the movement of that right foot coming down. It may feel like it's going through the ground below you. So you lower it slowly. Okay, we come back to the ground now. And let's swap the feet over. So if you feel that you can just switch the feet as you're laying down, you can do. If not, obviously just release it and bring the left foot, or the sole of the left foot, or the strap over the sole of the left foot. Okay, now the left leg is going to raise up. 
So keep the strap in both hands initially. And again, explore whether you want a bend in that knee or whether it feels like it wants to straighten. And again, on the next in breath, let's raise the head up. Gaze is at the toes. Let's exhale it back down. And then let's start to open the left foot out to the left side, keeping the right heel grounded. And that right hand may want to come out to the right side to steady you. You don't have to, you could keep hold of the strap, that feels better. Grounding the right heel, really allow the stability to be able to explore your range in this posture. And as I say, bearing in mind, often these are done standing, hooking fingers over the big toe. So it's a lot more challenging standing up. Okay, and coming back to neutral, we bring that left foot back up, pointing up towards the ceiling. And then we come to the other side, Feeling that feels too strong, just keep moving up and down towards the ground. So, left foot comes towards the right side. You can use that left hand out towards the side to steady the posture. Keeping contact, right heel with the mat. And again, let's come back up to centre. Take the strap in both hands and slowly lower the leg, lowering the left foot back towards the mat. Keep your eyes closed here. Just having a sense of a nice, steady, slow movement back down. And then when you're back on the floor, you can release your, your strap that you've been using. And you just pop that to one side. And we're going to now get ourselves ready for our relaxation. So if you need to put on any extra layers, please do so. You need to put socks back on, jumpers back on, take a couple of a couple of moments to do so and you can use your blanket to cover yourself. We're going to come and lay back down on your mat, on your back with either the legs stretched out ahead of you or with a bend in the knees. Take a few moments to find which position feels right. Make any final adjustments that you need to, to really get yourselves comfortable and set up here. We're coming into our final posture, our Shavasana, our relaxation. Just reminding ourselves that this is a really integral part of our yoga practice, allowing ourselves these last few minutes to come to stillness and to slow everything down. So let's take a few moments here just to notice how this feels, noticing any sensations, notice the effects of today's practice. So take a few moments.
bring your attention to the top of the head. And now the back of the head. Notice the contact point with the back of the head and the mat. And there's a sense of heaviness here. Bring your attention to the eyebrow center. Softening between the eyebrows. Eyelids are gently closed. And there's a sense of softness to the cheeks, the jaw, and the back of the throat. Tongue is gently resting, the upper, upper palate. And you can notice just a very subtle flow of the breath now through the nasal passages. You may be able to notice the change in temperature between your inhalation and exhalation. Let's follow the flow of air from the backs of the nasal passages down into the back of the throat into the upper chest. There may only be a subtle movement here now. And there's a sense of heaviness in the backs of the shoulders, coming all the way down the arms to the fingertips. And there's a gentle curl of the fingertips as they come to complete relaxation. Maybe a very soft movement to the belly with the breath. And there's a sense of openness in the front of the pelvis and the hips. And a sense of heaviness in the back of the pelvis. It's coming all the way down the legs, all the way to heels and the contact points with the feet with the mat. The whole body is still and heavy and relaxed. Just take a moment to absorb these sensations. Now start to draw your attention back to the body. Notice the position of the body in the room around you. Just reorientate your position in the room. Notice the shape and the form of the body on the mat. Start to bring your attention to time of day and the day of the week. And now start to notice any sounds around you. So there may be sounds further away, like the sound of my voice. So you start to notice the closer sounds, like the sound of your breath. Now start to lengthen the breath. So let's lengthen the inhalation. So we take a nice deep in breath. Let's take a nice deep out breath. 
You may want to open the mouth and sigh as you do so. And again, nice deep in breath. And as you breathe in, let's start to bring some movement into the fingertips and the toes. Sighing out that breath, so nice deep exhalation. Let's circle now through the wrists and the ankles. As you're breathing, it's nice and deep. And then let's hug the knees into the chest. Take a brief pause. And then gently rock from side to side. And when you're ready, come to roll onto the left, onto the right side, sorry, onto the right side. And take a pause here. And then slowly raise yourself to a seated position. And the eyes may want to just stay closed here. So you can keep the eyes closed or the gaze down as you come into a seated position. The hands come to heart center and we start to just rub the palms together. And let's generate a little bit of heat. So generating that heat, really feeling that. And then when you're ready, let's cup the eyes with the palms. And slowly start to blink. So slowly letting the light in. Lowering the palms down the face. And we bring the hands back to the heart centre. So hands together. Let's take a bow of the head to close the practice today. And I want to thank you all for joining. Thank you for being present and giving yourselves the time for today's practice. Um, and I hope very much to welcome you back next week. Um, and next week we will be covering sun salutations as our final, final week in the yoga series. So thank you everybody. Um, we'll send out the usual reminder emails um so yeah and we'll we'll let you just go and take yourselves off close the practice in any way that you want to try and go and do something relaxing take yourselves off to bed if you feel so that you can do so and um yeah we'll let you let you all trickle off now so thank you very much thanks everyone lovely to see you all bye thank you bye bye